All right, so I'm going to be taking the time series graphs that I made in my previous video, which you can find up here in the card section of this video. Um, and I'm going to be um, turning them into a more publication quality graph. And so just a reminder, we have our graph on the left here is individual data um, showing the increase in heart rate of each person um, during a progressively harder uh, treadmill test. And then this right graph is the average of all those people. So that's why there's only one line. So let's start by doing this to the individual data graph. Um, so first we need to get rid of the color because color costs um, more money um, when you're submitting a paper to be published. And oftentimes printing color doesn't work so well um, and a lot of people will eventually print your publication. Um, so you're gonna wanna get rid of color and try to use black and white whenever possible. Um, so if you click each line individually, um, so click it on the left click to highlight it and then right click it, go down to format data series and then go to this paint bucket and we're going to change each one to so that the, the line as well as the dots are black. Um, so first change the line to black. And just so you know, if you want for some reason to show the difference between each of these lines, um, even though we're going to turn them all black, you could change the lines so that they are different versions of dotted lines, which is what I'm showing you here on the right. Um, so the, this one could be a small dot, the next one could be maybe a longer dot, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not going to do that here because the data all pretty much does the same thing. Everybody had an increase in heart rate in a very similar manner, um, and so it's important it's not important to show individuals um, as they're different from one another because they all pretty much have the same thing. Uh, the point with these graphs is just to show that everybody has an increase in heart rate as the intensity increases, which is what we would expect. Um, but anyway, so back to what I was doing, make the line um, black and then you're going to go and click marker and it's going to bring you into the marker um, uh, change or the way of changing the marker. So we need to turn the borders black and then we need to go to fill and turn the fill black as well. And now you'll see that that top line, everything about it is black, there's no color to it. And we need to do that same thing for all four of these lines. So I'll just quickly do that for the other four lines. Okay, so you can see now all of our lines are black. The dots associated with, with each line are also black. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of these uh, grid lines on uh, sort of the background of the graph. Um, so you don't usually see those in publications. It just adds extra sort of noise to the image. So we're just going to click it and then delete or hit the delete button to get rid of them. Um, the next thing we'll do is get rid of the title. The title is usually not going to be on graphs in publications um, because you're going to have um, a, a, a block of text underneath each graph that tells people what it is, so you're not usually going to have a title. So we can just click that and hit delete again. Let's get rid of that. And because I made all these lines uh, identical, so there's not a difference in color or in one being dotted versus another type of dotted or solid line, um, having this legend down here is pointless because the, you can't tell the lines apart anyways. So I'm going to click the legend and again hit delete to get rid of that. All right, so we're much further along. Um, this is looking much better already um, as far as looking more like a research uh, quality graph, but there's still a lot that we need to do. Um, so let's click this uh, x-axis here and that just highlights it. Now we're going to hit right click and format the axis. What we do want to do with the x-axis is turn it as well um, into a black line. Um, in a thick black line, you want thick bold uh, lettering and lines for your graphs so that they will print well as well as show up well when projected on a projected screen. Um, so let's change the width up to maybe, let's say three, color of the line black. And then same thing with the text here. Um, you want to change the text, make it um, black, and probably want to bold the text as well. 
And then do the same for the, the x-axis. So for here, we want to do one additional thing. We need to add tick marks because we have all these numbers on the x-axis. So we're going to go to this data symbol here, go to major tick marks. If it's not already open, uh, hit the drop down to open it. And let's do outside ticks. All right, so now that there are outside ticks for the, um, the y-axis, we're going to go back to this paint bucket and make sure it is black and we're going to increase the the thickness of the lines to the point of the lines and to uh, match what we have on the the x-axis so we're going to make that three as well and now we're going to change the um, the lettering or so the numbers let's make those bold and make sure that they are also black um, and then let's do the same thing for the y-axis title, so bold and make sure it's black. Uh, for whatever reason, Excel likes these sort of dark grays instead of blacks. Um, I don't understand why they do that, but so for instance, looking at this graph on the right that we haven't adjusted, all these lines, all this text, all of that is dark gray, that's not black. Um, so it's not going to look as well um, as these black lines are going to when projected or printed. Um, so make sure you turn those all black and also probably going to want to increase the font size. This is a pretty small font size. Um, uh, 14 looks pretty good and so we're going to have to do the same for the y-axis title and let's go ahead and um, I think 14 works for that as well. So 14 for both of those. We'll do the same thing for these. Make those 14 and um, that actually looks a little funny to me, so let's go down to 12 and let's bring this down to 12 to match. All right, so that looks a little better. So at this point, this is, in my opinion, a research quality graph. Um, now, the issue is getting it out of Excel and into whatever format you need. There are programs out there um, where you can export graphs from Excel uh, with a uh, high uh, DOS per square inch. Um, which is going to make it a higher resolution. Excel does not do that on its own. You do have to have add-on software to do that. Or you can um, put it into, you can copy and paste this into PowerPoint. It's going to mess up some of your formatting, so you might have to do some reformatting. And then there's a workaround that I have for PowerPoint that I'll, I'll put a, a link to how to do that in the text below as well. So you'll have links to both of those in the text below. Um, but regardless, if you can get something that looks like this as an export in a high resolution, this I think would be just fine for a research uh, publication. One thing you may want to consider, but I don't think it's a big deal, is changing this y-axis. So maybe instead of starting at 0, it starts at 20 or 40, just so you have um, a little bit more of the space being dedicated to the lines. But because they all look about the same, I don't think that's necessary here. I, I think this is probably a fine y-axis. All right, so that is all the individual data, um, how to make that into a research quality um, graph. Now let's do the same thing for this, um, this average data on the right. And so we're gonna do all the same things that we just did. We do have a little bit of extra um, information we need to add to this. Um, so let's add that extra information first. So click on the graph and then click on um, design under the chart. Um, tool, uh, chart tools, and we're going to add a chart element. So because this graph on the right is average data and uh, it represents more than one person, we need to add error bars to it that shows the variance of that data. So the graph on the left didn't have variance, that, or we didn't need to show variance because we were showing individual data, and so it's showing the variance um, sort of in, uh, already um, just because we have each person. Um, but this time we need to add error bars. So under um, add chart element, go down to error bars and then just click on more error bars options. And so when you do that, um, it's going to bring up the error bars um, pane on the right here. And let's see, actually it did not bring up the error bars pane, uh, what we, I wanted, but click on this data, um, this thing that looks like bars, and then you'll have what I, what I need. Um, so Click on custom, so sorry, uh, click the checkbox next to custom and click specify. 
And what I did before um, I started making this video that you're seeing now is I calculated the standard error mean of each of our conditions from the averages, uh, uh, from the, the data for each of the conditions. Um, so I have another video that shows you how to uh, calculate standard error mean. You can go to that video. I'll make sure that it's up in the, um, in the, the links in the card sections of this video. Um, and you can figure out how to do that. Um, but let's just do this quick. So for the, the upper, highlight all those. And then again, for the lower, highlight all of them again. And you're going to see it's going to add error bars to our data that matches the error that we calculated. And so then what we need to do is just make all these uh, lines um, look like the lines that were over here. So make everything thick, make everything bold, make everything dark, uh, make everything black. Um, so we'll get rid of all the things we don't need. And then just start making things black and we should be good. So let's make this black make the marker black make this all black and bold and increase the font size same here black bold increase the font size same with this in black bold and this time it was uh, we used I believe a 14 font size um, and then we need to add some ticks to the the, the y-axis so we can add ticks here um, let's see go to the data tick marks outside major ticks major types uh, outside um, and then we need to make that all bold and black as well so let's make it three point font to match what we did in the other graph and make sure it's black. And then click on this one and do the same thing to the line. So make it black and make it a three point font. And we're getting very close here. We need to click on these error bars and do the same thing to that and make it black. Change that to a two point font. Um, so now we have, uh, again, a, a graph that would be perfectly acceptable for research publication showing the average values with error bars and then the individual values over here.